Today's headlines. President Rodrigo Duterte meets with world leaders on the second day of the APEX summit in Vietnam. The Department of Transportation assures the start of the Metro Manila subway operations will push through by 2022. South Korea offers $1.7 billion worth of loans to improve the Philippines' transport, IT, and energy sectors. The Philippine Air Force bestows military honors on actress and reservist Isabel Granada. Good day. I'm Pia Rosas Morato. Welcome to the PNA Newsroom. President Rodrigo Duterte is on his second day stay in Vietnam Friday, where he will meet with various world leaders. Among them were the presidents of Vietnam, Papua New Guinea, and Russia. Our News and Information Bureau Director Gigi Arcilla Agtay files this report. President Rodrigo Roa Duterte met with Vietnam President Tran Dai Quang and Papua New Guinea Prime Minister Peter O'Neill at the sidelines of the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Economic Leaders Meeting here Thursday. President Duterte had a bilateral meeting with a Vietnamese leader who congratulated him on his chairmanship of ASEAN 2017. President Duterte, for his part, congratulated Tran for the successful holding of the APEC. The two leaders discussed cooperation in the areas of politics, defense, economy, and campaign against illegal drugs, among others. With regard to economic cooperation, the president conveyed the desire to increase the two-way trade. Vietnam is the Philippines' 12th major trading partner in 2016, at 2.72 billion US dollars. President Duterte also showed appreciation for the increasing tourist arrivals from Vietnam, which rose by 7.33% at 33,895 tourists in 2016. Following his bilateral meeting with Vietnam, President Duterte met with Papua New Guinea Prime Minister O'Neill at the Premier Village Resort. During the meeting, President Duterte expressed the Philippines' support for Papua New Guinea's chairmanship and hosting of the APEC in 2018. Both sides lauded the growing bilateral trade relations and looked forward to further enhancing economic cooperation, particularly in agriculture and fisheries. They also acknowledged strong people-to-people -people ties, noting that there are 35,000 Filipinos in Papua New Guinea. Earlier today, President Duterte joined the plenary session of the APEC Business Advisory Council Dialogue with APEC leaders at Furuma Resort in Da Nang. As this year's ASEAN chairman, Duterte also led other ASEAN leaders during the first ever dialogue of APEC and ASEAN heads. He also met with Russian President Vladimir Putin for a bilateral meeting today. Tonight, President Rodrigo Duterte joined other APEC leaders at the gala dinner and cultural performance at the Sheraton Da Nang Resort and Spa. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Gigi Arcelia Agtay. World leaders are expected to start arriving in the Philippines this weekend to attend the 31st ASEAN Summit and related summits. Some leaders are expected to grace the ASEAN Business and Investment Summit 2017 to launch the ASEAN Mentorship for Entrepreneurs Network. The ASEAN leaders will join each other in the evening for a gala dinner. They will then meet their counterparts in the East Asia Summit Leaders Retreat. The 31st ASEAN Summit will start on Monday with an opening ceremony, followed by the 31st ASEAN Summit Plenary Session. The ASEAN leaders will be meeting Chinese President Xi Jinping, Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, Korean President Moon Jae-in, and UN Secretary General Antonio Gutierrez. They will also have interface sessions with the private sector on the same day. By Tuesday, the 12th East Asia Summit and the 15th ASEAN India Summit will take place. The ASEAN leaders will meet for the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership Summit with leaders from Australia, New Zealand, China, Japan, South Korea, and India. 
Also on Tuesday, the Philippines will hand over the ASEAN chairmanship to Singapore for the ASEAN Summit 2018. The Department of Transportation said the construction of the Metro Manila subway project or MMSP is on track. The DOTR targets to start a segment of the subway's operations before the end of the Duterte administration in 2022. Transportation Secretary Arthur Tugade has negotiated with the Japanese government to fast-track the completion of a segment of the MMSP by the second quarter of 2022. The Philippines and Japan will exchange notes during the ASEAN summit and sign a loan agreement in January 2018. The groundbreaking is set by fourth quarter of 2018. The 355 billion peso subway system will have 13 stations from Mindanao Avenue in Quezon City up to the Ninoy Aquino International Airport. It will connect major business districts and government centers and serve up to 370,000 passengers daily in its opening year. The following phases of the project would involve extending lines up to San Jose del Monte Bulacan in the north and up to Dasmariñas Cavite in the south. Special point-to-point -point or P2P buses will now take passengers during rush hour as an option in case of an MRT train breakdown. Under this scheme, passengers in the morning can take the P2P buses from North Avenue in Quezon City. The buses will then drop off passengers in Ortigas before heading to the end point in Ayala Avenue, Makati City. In the evening, commuters can board the buses at Taft Avenue in Pasay City or Ayala Avenue before heading straight to North Avenue without any stops. The government will deploy 24 buses. Four will charge no fare while the rest will charge 24 pesos a ride. The government held a test run of its new P2P bus service Thursday morning. The trip from Quezon City to Makati took about 1 hour and 15 minutes. Transportation Undersecretary Cesar Chavez earlier said, the government will deploy fewer MRT trains so that commuters do not experience many breakdowns. 22 participants graduated from the three-month K-9 unit basic handlers course of the Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency. The course seeks to enable participants to appreciate and understand how a K-9 unit team works as frontliners during anti-drug operations. It also intends to enhance the handler's connection with their respective dogs as future K-9 team supervisors. Participants were trained on understanding K-9 behavior, search patterns and detecting hazards, and airport and port operations among others. The Pidea K-9 unit has 52 strong narcotic detection dogs or NDDs and 57 handlers nationwide. Pidea has requested for an additional 934 million budget in 2018 to finance several projects such as the acquisition of 13 NDDs with training. Pidea and the local government of San Jose del Monte City, Bulacan signed a memorandum of understanding for the donation of a 1,000 square meter parcel of land in the city. The land will be used in putting up a canine facility for the agency's narcotic dogs. Members of the New People's Army shot and killed a four-month-old baby in Bukidnon. In a report by the PNP Police Regional Office 10, the communist rebels ambushed a patrol car of the Amay Manabilang Bumbaran Municipal Police Station. The suspects also fired upon a Toyota Fortuner that was tailing the patrol car. A four-month-old female child, identified as Machorao Malaysia, was shot in the forehead. Two other civilians in the Fortuner were injured. Bombaran Lanao del Sur Chief of Police Joven Peñon Aquista and two other cops were also hurt in the patrol car along with another civilian. One of the cops who was with them died. The police regional office 10 and the armed forces of the Philippines condemned the attack that involved innocent civilians. Still to come, South Korea offers $1.7 billion worth of loans to improve the Philippines' transport, IT, and energy sectors. Boracay expects the arrival of five cruise ships before the end of the year. These and more when the PNA Newsroom continues.
South Korea offered a $1.7 billion credit facility to help implement the Duterte administration's priority programs. The loans would be made available through the Export-Import Bank of Korea or KEXIM. Korea also offered another $7 million in the form of non-lending programs. The Department of Finance said KEXIM identified the transport, information and communications technology and energy sectors for possible loan assistance. Among the financial tools that the Philippines can tap from South Korea is a $100 million credit line for a project preparation facility. The signing ceremony will be held at the sidelines of the ASEAN Summit next week. The Bureau of Customs seized counterfeit cigarettes and food items worth 300 million pesos in two separate raids in Manila and Quezon City. The fake cigarettes, soaps, and seasoning products reportedly came from China and were stored in warehouses owned by a certain Erlina Rico, also known as Linda Chua. Customs Commissioner Isidro La Peña said, The confiscation of the items was a result of surveillance activities by the BOC's Enforcement and Security Service. He advised the public not to patronize counterfeit items, particularly food products, as it may be harmful to health. Meanwhile, La Peña denied the text messages that he is soliciting monetary assistance for charity projects. The BOC received reports that a certain attorney Vasquez is asking brokers and importers to donate for charity purposes allegedly initiated by La Peña. The Department of Trade and Industry reported that it has established 661 negotiation centers nationwide. The DTI is mandated to establish negotio centers under Republic Act No. 10644 or the Go Negotio Act. These assist in business registration, provide advisory services, promote business information and advocacy, and monitor and evaluate business processes for micro, small, and medium enterprises. The Bureau of Small and Medium Enterprise Development, or BS Med, said these negotio centers have made doing business easier for SMMEs. The DTI earlier allotted $530 million to establish 150 negotia centers this year. It already surpassed its full-year target, having put up 209 negotia centers to date. The agency began establishing negotia centers in 2014. At least five cruise ships are expected to arrive in Boracay before the year ends. The Caticlan Jetty Ports Administration said, Two of these cruise ships have confirmed their arrival in the said island resort. It said the MS Millennium is expected to return to Boracay on November 21, while the MS World Dream is set to dock for the first time on November 22. The MS Millennium is the 11th cruise ship to arrive in Boracay this year. The MS World Dream is expected to bring with it some 4,000 passengers and some 2,000 crew members. Its passengers will be transported via boat and will roam around different malls and souvenir shops in the resort island. Up next, the Philippine Air Force bestows military honors on actress and reservist Isabel Granada. Tropical Storm Salome is expected to leave the country tomorrow morning. These and more when the PNA Newsroom returns. Mahigit limang libong mamamayan ng Cotabato City sabay-sabay naghugas ng mga kamay para ipagdiwang ang Global Handwashing Day. Panoorin! May kasabihan ang kinabukasan ay nasa ating mga kamay. Kaya para rin sa mas malusog at malinis na kinabukasan, dapat palaging maghugas ng kamay. Itinataguyod ng pamahalaan ng lungsod ng Cotabato ang malusog at malinis na kapaligiran na nakatuon sa pangkalahatang paglago at tagumpay ng mga kabataan. Dito, nakilahok ang mga estudyante, magulang at mga guro sa Global Handwashing Day sa Cotabato City. Sabay-sabay na nakukas ng mga kamay ang nasa limang libong lumahok sa selebrasyon sa main highway ng Cotabato City. Sa ngayon, tiniyak ni Mayor Cynthia Giani Sayadi na halos lahat ng daycare centers sa barangay ng lungsod ay may functioning hand washing facility para maggamit ng mga bata. 
Ako po si Princess Abiba Saripaudak at ito ang Salam News Daily. Abangan ang iba pa naming kwento at pagtalakay sa aming tradisyon, kultura at relihiyon sa Salam TV tuwing linggo alas 8.30 ng gabi sa PTV. Top swimmer Bay Newberry is leading Team Philippines in the 41st Southeast Asian Age Group Championships. Joining Newberry in the tournament for swimmers 18 years old and below are De La Salzabel's Maurice Sacho Ilustre and Nicole Pamintuan. Newberry delivered the country's only gold medal in the 2016 edition of the Sea Swimming Age Group Championships in Bangkok, Thailand. Illustre bagged four golds in the 2017 ASEAN School Games in Singapore in July this year. He also won seven gold medals in the Palarong Pambansa in Antigua in May. Pamintuan is a member of the women's 4 by 200 meters relay team that won the bronze medal in the SEA Games in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia last August. The Southeast Asian Age Group Championships will run until November 12 at the Hasanal Bolkia National Sports Complex Pool in Bandar Seri, Bagawan, Brunei. Actress Isabel Granada received military honors as her remains arrived in the country from Doha, Qatar. Granada's casket was wrapped in a Philippine flag upon arrival as a Philippine Air Force contingent proceeded to give full military honors. The actress enlisted in the Air Force in 2001 and served with the rank of Airwoman Second Class Sergeant. She was temporarily assigned to the Air Force Special Service Group with the Air Force Specialty Code Skill in Recreation and Volleyball. Granada's remains were brought to the Santuario de San Jose Parish in East Green Hills in Mandaluyong City. It will be transferred to Arlington on Sunday, November 12 to be cremated before it will be transferred back to Santuario de San Jose. The actress passed away last Saturday at Hama General Hospital in Doha, Qatar after falling into a comatose state as a result of internal bleeding due to a brain aneurysm. The ASEAN Convention Center in Clark, Pampanga was opened in time for the 31st ASEAN Summit. The new facility will host many of the summit's important meetings. PNA editor Benj Bondok has the report. A total of 21 heads of state and government plus United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres will attend the 31st ASEAN Summit and 12th East Asia Summit. Presidential Communications Secretary Martin Andanar confirmed that the preliminary meetings of senior ministers for the twin summits will be held in Clark Freeport on November 10 and 11. Main venue is the ASEAN Convention Center which had a soft opening last month during the 11th ASEAN Defense Ministers Meeting chaired by Philippine Defense Secretary Delphine Lorenzana. Nestled on hilly terrain between the ASEAN Summit Villas and Fontana Resort, the ASEAN Convention Center can accommodate up to 6,000 delegates within its exhibition halls, meeting rooms and two grand ballrooms. Meanwhile, Ambassador Malshano Painor, head of the ASEAN 2017 National Organizing Council, said all VIP arrivals and departures would go through Clark International Airport. This is to ensure that air traffic at Ninoy Aquino International Airport won't be hampered, thus preventing a repetition of the congestion during the APEC Summit in 2015. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Bench Bondo. Tropical Storm Salome is expected to leave the Philippine area of responsibility by tomorrow morning. Pagasa said Salome is moving west-northwest over the West Philippine Sea. All tropical cyclone warning signals have been lifted. Estimated rainfall is from moderate to heavy within the 200-kilometer diameter of the storm. Residents over central Luzon, Ilocos region, Cordillera and Cagayan Valley are advised to be alert against possible flash floods and landslides. Sea travel over the western seaboard of northern and central Luzon are discouraged due to rough to very rough seas. Heavy rains dumped by Salome caused landslides and rock slides along major roads in summer early Friday. The Department of Public Works and Highways reported four incidents that blocked major roads linking Samar and northern Samar provinces. The DPWH said the roads would be passable again within 24 hours. Let's check out the weather outlook for the rest of the country this weekend.
here's another look at today's headlines. President Rodrigo Duterte meets with world leaders on the second day of the APEC summit in Vietnam. The Department of Transportation assures the start of the Metro Manila subway operations will push through by 2022. South Korea offers $1.7 billion worth of loans to improve the Philippines' transport, IT, and energy sectors. The Philippine Air Force bestows military honors on actress and reservist Isabel Granada. The holidays are coming soon. It's 45 days before Christmas. For more stories, please log on to www.pna.gov.ph or visit the PNA page on Facebook and Twitter. And that's your daily dose of the hottest news and the latest information that you need to know from the PNA Newsroom. I'm Pia Rosas Morato. Good day.